There's a pretty one, Ulysses. Hello booktube, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with a review of an anthology of short stories by German women writers. And it is called German Women Writers of the 20th Century. There's no subtitle, so if you just looked at the title, you wouldn't necessarily understand that it's an anthology of short fiction. But trust me, it is. And it's edited by Elizabeth R. Herman and Edna Hutzenmeyer Spitz, published in 1978. It is expensive to buy, unless you can find somewhere that I didn't find, to buy a paper copy affordably, but it's available as an ebook on Scribd. So if you have a Scribd membership, you can read it for free, but it is worth whatever you can afford because it serves as a marvelous introduction to a lot of German female literary voices that are otherwise untranslated or hard to find. It's the best anthology of short fiction I have read in my entire life. And it was recommended to me by Britta Bowler, and I read it as my debut read for this year-long Read More German Lit Challenge that Mel of Mel's Bookland Adventures and Britta are sponsoring. So, awesome. I should also say that this anthology includes writers from Germany, East and West Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. Most of the ones I'm going to talk about today are from Germany, but the last one is from Austria. The stories cover the first 75 years of the 20th century. Most of the writers featured were born in the 20th century. A couple were born a few years earlier, and there are just some gems. It was a five-star read for me. There was a couple four-star reads but everything else was a five-star read. How often does that happen? Even if it's a collection by your favorite short story writer, it's really rare to have so many great stories in one book. So, let me tell you about a few of the ones that have stuck with me the most. Before that, let me say, I didn't read the introduction to the book until several weeks after I finished the book. I just read it about an hour ago. There aren't any spoilers in it, but each story there's, I think, 16 stories by 16 different writers, and there is an introduction, a biographical sketch of each writer before each of the stories. Don't read that introduction until after you finish the story, because several of them have spoilers for what the story's about. I hate that. That's a word of warning, especially if you don't like spoilers. The first one that was really, really memorable for me was by Elizabeth Langesser called In Hiding, and it was published in a collection of her short fiction in 1947. And what a stunning story it is. It is about two German women in the early days. They're uh, both uh, working the black market, post-World War II black market in Germany. And they are talking about the bad old days, just a few years prior, and one of them is telling a story to the other about hiding a Jewish woman in her home, hiding her from the Nazis. And she's speaking very frankly and talking about the fact that as that poor Jewish woman began to endure a mental breakdown, that this German woman began to resent her and wanted to get rid of her. That's all I'm going to say, but it has an incredible ending, an incredible reversal involving a parrot, and wow! The only author that was not new to me was Anna Sagers, because I read and loved one of her most famous novels, The Seventh Cross, last fall. I will put a link to my review below. And Anna Sigmers went into exile during World War II, and her life is as colorful as a novel. Her story here is called The Excursion of the Dead Girls, and it's a remarkable story in content, in theme, and structure. I don't know how she does it. It's really difficult to describe. You just have to read it. But it's like a dream that the main character is having, where she's revisiting as an adult in her dreams. It's not exactly like that, but it's th the easiest way to explain the story is it's like she's in a dream revisiting a childhood field trip with a bunch of her classmates. And the way that Segers plays with time in this story, linking each of those young women's future history through the war colluding with the Nazis, becoming Nazis, resisting the Nazi regime, and all the various ends that they met. As the dream narrative 
of the field trip back in the day, in the Weimar days, is told. It's unlike anything I've ever read before, and it was a stunning short story. It made me think of other writers that play with time that way and give little micro-narratives that show how various characters... What happens to them later in life? I'm thinking about Anthony Mara, A Constellation of Vital Phenomena. But the way Sagers handles it in this story, it's something unique. And you must check out that story. And the one that I want to tell you about at the most length is a story by Luisa Rinzer called Nina's Story. And this is a story that is framed by the writer of the short story showing her friend the draft of this story while the writer takes a nap and then we get the story and the story is about a female prisoner of the nazi regime at the very very tail end of world war ii the concentration camp has just released all its prisoners as the allied bombers are on the verge of winning the war and so this woman and her friends are wandering around wondering where to go now that the Nazis, the SS, have booted them out of the concentration camp and said, fend for yourselves. And it's a harrowing story. I'm not going to say too much about it, other than that there is a moment between her and a SS guard who is in trouble. And she has to make a choice whether to help him or not. So you got to read the story. And then, at the end, the frame reasserts itself. So the writer of this story we have just read wakes up from her nap, and then she has a long discussion with the woman who has read the story and liked it about what revisions need to be made, both for fictional and moral uh, reasons. And I want to share this quote that comes at the end, where the writer of the story, and I don't mean Louisa Rincer, I mean her protagonist who's written the story, that I've just described to you about the female prisoner. That writer says, none of us are heroes after all. We only pretend to be sometimes. All of us are a little cowardly, a little calculating and egotistic and far from anything like greatness. And that you see, that is what I should like to show that we are at once good and evil, heroic and cowardly, stingy and generous, that everything exists close together, side by side, and that it is impossible to know what impelled the person to any act, whether good or evil motives. I don't like the people who want to make things simple when everything is so frightfully complex. It's a really fascinating way to end that story. And then I read up on the author. So in the introduction, embedded in the anthology, I find out that Louisa Rinzer was born in 1911 in Bavaria. She studied education and psychology in Munich, became a teacher in Salzburg before the war. She married a composer who was later killed on the Russian front during the war. They had two sons. By 1941, her writings were forbidden in Germany, but she, she didn't leave Germany during the war. She was arrested and imprisoned until the end of the war. At, at some point in her life, she became a devout Catholic, and she was very active in church including uh, participating actively in the Vatican Council, the second one. And as of when this was published in 1978, she lived near Rome. She had written, uh, at the, by that time, over 50 books, many translated uh, radio, TV, poetry, essays, you name it. I went to Wikipedia just... I don't know why, I don't remember why, but I went to Wikipedia and found out that she had since died. She died in 2002, and she had had a, I guess, romantic relationship with the Jesuit priest. I didn't look up those details, so if I've got that wrong, somebody correct me, but it, uh, she had some kind of a relationship with a Jesuit priest that was controversial, so I'm assuming it was a romantic one. But after she died, a biography was published and shocked the literary world. The uh, author is Jose Sanchez de Murillo, uh, Louise Rincer, A Life of Contradictions, 2011. And it exposed her as having been a Nazi in her early life. And that when she was a school teacher, she had denounced her Jewish headmaster to further her own career. I have not gone beyond what Wikipedia says, but I was struck by that in terms of the way that this early story of hers 
Nina's story was written and that passage that I shared with you. So that is something I do want to find out more about, but that made the story called Nina's story that much richer. And the last one I want to uh, quickly mention is by the Austrian writer Ingeborg Bachmann. This short story is called The Barking, and I don't want to say too much about it other than it's the only thing I've ever read by Bachmann. I have her novel, I believe it's called Melina, on my pile to read later this year. But this short story was so layered and confusing in that wonderful way. Like, you just think, there's probably no answer to the questions I have, but I am going to be mulling over these questions for many weeks to come. It's about a old woman and her daughter-in-law and her tyrannical son who refuses to ever meet her. He is a psychiatrist specializing in the mental health conditions of the Holocaust survivors. But he's a tyrant, and it's the relationship that his new wife has with his aging mother. And then there's barking at the end of the story, and it is a puzzle. It was a rich, densely literary, fantastic, very disturbing puzzle. I can't wait to read more Bachman, and it, I can't wait to reread the story to see if I can at least get a bit more of what the heck that was all about, because it was fantastic. Okay, that's all I know how to say about this book. I hope I've said enough to get you to find the book and read it, because it's just a stunning collection of of amazing fiction by German women writers. I loved it. Try it. Thanks for watching. Thank you.